Ella Saylor is a good first pick. Love to Will Caracas and uh, a blue white control or mono white. I can appreciate it's a pretty good mono white card. I could also take Ace the Mind Sculptor. Question is, do I want to stay mono white or do I want to branch into Jace? Jace is better than all, but it seems unnecessary to go into a second color when I have such a good card as Skyclad Apparition. So I think I'm just going to take it. It is worse than Jace, I think, but uh, it's kind of close. And now there is Figure of Destiny or. Alex Wave, I think, are the two cards. If I'm taking Jace, I probably would take Wall of Omens. Alex Wave is a card that uh, works pretty nice with Containment Priest. It also just clears away a bunch of creatures and re triggers Enter the Battlefield's effect. So you can, for example, uh, get another trigger of this. Another trigger of this, you do get, uh, your opponent does get a uh, an elemental, but maybe you exile something small. So I'm gonna take Parallax Way, I think it's a pretty good card. And staying mono white for now. Alright, Armageddon or Student of Warfare. Nothing particularly good in blue, so I'm not too sad about that. I think I have a lot of expensive cards, so I kinda of want a cheaper one. And this one is pretty good. Pretty nice to have it on turn one. If you got nothing on turn two, you can turn it into a free fifth first striker. Armageddon is powerful, but I think I can probably wield that. I mean, I could wield Student too, but I think when I have such a, a big array of expensive cards, I should just take Student of Warfare. Here is Flicker Wisp, another card that in the same vein as Parallax Wave, you can combine with the Containment Priest or with your own. It comes into play effects. It also works pretty nice with, with Parallax Wave. I'm going into Mono. All right. So there is this member as a removal spell. We still play it in mono white, or you can have this kind of clunky card that, uh, if you could return something like a script mine or a wasteland, I would be much more interested in. I think I'm gonna take this member. And then if I don't end up with swords or path, it's pretty nice to have. Uh, it is a one mana spell though, for the most part. Can like play a scrub land to like be able to cast it for only paying two life, but it's a mono white kind of deck that can often afford to play a four life. Oh. Maybe against mono red, it's not so good. Right. The only card here is oust, and it's not a bad card. It's uh, if I'm super aggressive, it's not so good, but I guess it's not great with student warfare, but uh, a fine card, and uh, there isn't anything else here. Oh, there's the fear now, but Adeline is just a very good aggressive card. So while I would have probably gotten a, a good blue white deck, I think this works out nicely. There's also Dark Depths and a past Thespian stage, but the problem with this deck is unless I got a Weathered Wayfarer and, and are on the draw, I'm not going to be able to get to do the Dark Depths combo anyway. Okay, pretty clear Relic, I think. There is sort of Fire and Ice, but that, the only way I like it is if I got... Stormforge Mystic and Badger Skull, and I just need a second equip. And I think Relic is very powerful. Uh, Cyber. Okay. Mutavolt or Factory. Mutavolt does pick up some random uh, tribal synergies, but I don't know if there is that much. That one can be a free free on blocks. I think still, since I am probably using it in an aggressive way, it's probably better to just have a Mutavolt. Okay, figures better than Wall of Omens with this deck. Uh, see if Armageddon wields. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Mono White looks open, which is nice. Like Talia, of course, did not will Caracas, but that's not surprising. You don't need to move on a white to play uh, Caracas. All right, I'm gonna give someone the tendrils, of course. You don't want to be a part pooper and take someone's tendrils. <laughs> this deck also 
usually has a pretty good matchup against Storm if you get Talia. They have like Rin Wingmare and stuff like that. It's a scale orb, but as I said, I don't think it's good enough. Gonna. You can play it and get some effect right away, but. All right, we have Recruit of the Guard, fine card. It actually gives me basically most of my creatures. The only thing it doesn't give me is Adeline. There's also Lauren of the Third Path and Revoker. I think I like Lauren a little better than Recruit of the Guard. Recruit of the Guard is slow and, well, it's a good toolbox card. It's just, uh, it takes you such a long long time to get gold and I think Lauren is usually better than a revoker because they do a similar thing blowing up like a artifact enchantment but a rogue just shuts it down so if your opponent finds an answer you can unlock it and Lauren also has some blink synergies which is more pliable than a revoker so I think Lauren is very nice here especially with cards like uh, Echo is and maybe even Parallax Wave now there is Elspeth Conqueror's Death or Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb looks promising in this deck. It's uh, a little awkward that I have a lot of double white cards, but being able to cause Palace Yale to return earlier, maybe even Aurangeddon sometimes. I think it's more important than taking Elspeth Conqueror's Death, which isn't even that good of a card. I'm going to take Ancient Tomb here. I might not play Mutavolt here just to have. I don't want to have too many colorless land in my deck. Here, the clear pick is obviously Giver of Runes. I like it less than Mother of Runes, but it's a perfect payroll card. And I guess I'll take Restoration Angel. And Blink, Loran, Sky Clay. Sometimes Flick a Wisp. That's okay. And it makes Ancient Tomb better. Like love a Talia. I think the prob there's not too many decks that want Talia. I mean obviously you can play like white black mid-range and it's probably fine, but not all black white mid-range deck wants to even play Talia because it messes up your lingering souls and planeswalkers. And blue white control doesn't want Talia usually. Uh, so I think if Talia gets open, I should probably get it. Alright, Esper Sentinel is a perfectly fine card. It's not as good as Talia, but it has somewhat of a similar effect, punishing your opponent for casting non-creature spells. Weathered Wafer I don't even like in this deck. If I had a Dark Depths combo, I probably would play it just to randomly be on the draw and have it be a good card. I like me Esper Sentinel. And we got a lot of 1 drops and 3 drops. And boom, we got the Rit of Falia. Love to get a Containment Priest too, but I just think Tala is just too important. Containment Priest might actually be a better card, but it also probably wheels. I hope. The card is pretty... It's, um, it's 8, so someone needs to take... Ah, eh, maybe it doesn't, but Tala is just too good. Alright, Savin's Reclamation. Yep, we call about that card in the stick. I think it's gonna be... Fine car. The problem is if your opponent doesn't even kill your stuff, it doesn't do much. I'll take it and maybe I'll play it. It's a value card, but I'm not sure how much this deck wants value. If I get a script mine, it becomes better. That your spirit is nice. You drop that makes you less susceptible to. Like Supreme Verdict, Wrath of God. Alright, I did Wheel Recruiter of the Guard, but I think I might just take a Revoker here. Suddenly I have a lot of uh, tulips. Don't need it to have a Concealed Quarter just to make this member cheaper. Elspeth Conqueror's Death might be fine. 
I got Flicker Wisp as well. It's not great with Talia though. Um, I might not play it. We'll see. I think too expensive, and I did not will uh, containment priest, unfortunately. Okay, I think solitude is nice as a top end, and it's also a card I can. Uh, pitch if I'm up against something very unfair. Yeah, path to exile. That might be better than oust. Not sure if it's it's fine. I would prefer swords to plowshares, but Could play 16 lands with this deck because I'm not gonna be mana screwed and I have a pretty low career. Could also cut the reclamation. Alright, we got our first miss here. I don't think I'm gonna play any of these cards. I don't think this is a Grim Monolith deck. I don't have too many expensive cards. So I might just take. Boon bring a Valkyrie, I guess maybe Mono Red. Right, and another miss it looks like. Or oh, I mean Jitte is Okay, I guess. And I don't like Winds of Abandon. Pretty much a bad version of Path to Exile. Okay, uh what kind of splash showed on of the skulls? I can take Hero Blade Hold maybe. And I should have fallen, it's not bad. And if it's Spellbinder or Mother of Runes. Don't like Mother of Runes, just take a cheaper card. Uh, that's Cup Oust, I think. And. Yeah, Cup Reclamation. Though. Vanguard, nice. Probably play 16 lands with this deck. And it's Mentor or Legionnaire. Or legionnaire, I don't have that many non creature spells. So we have proper stiff. The reason I'm cutting owls is that this looks like pretty aggressive and I don't want to give up on free life. Also, it's not that good of a card anyway. Okay. Oh well. Yeah, it's a uh, all the armor get on combo. Yeah. 
that's okay. Points on five. Remember the old Gadok Teague Greens on Scene discussion where, well, I don't want to put Gadok Teague in my deck to go with Greens on Scene because um, then I can't cast Scene it's with Gadok Teague. Right, so I think I'm going to lead with Revoker to stop Mox yet. Basically, does the same thing as Tyler here, delays my opponent one turn. Yeah. Can't cause endurance. Have to watch out for that. But... So, if my opponent does nothing for two turns, I might just cause a turn five armor get on two. Okay, well, green, black with a mox. I don't know what I should do. Cyborg with probably nothing. I could put in relic because it was a black deck, but I did. My opponent doesn't necessarily have to be a reanimator. Uh, sure, I'll keep this. It is slow. Well, I have to pass that before it gets to the third chapter, but I could also just sky clear it. What I could do is just allow my opponent to level it up. As long as it doesn't hit level 8, I can just sky clear it. It's a pretty dang good. Or sky clear because your opponent only gets um, mm -hmm. a one one if my opponent deals with sky clear. Mm -hmm. So that's my plan. And then also uh, parallax wave can reset sky clear. It's going to be a little bit of a blowout, I think. But my opponent sent a lot of mana into that. I could also revoke the Hex Drinker earlier, but now, of course. This seems like an easy play. Next time I'm going to... I might just... I could play Parallax Wave and try to protect my hero. But... Oh, right. Not the end of the world. I'm down to 11. I don't care about the edict sacrifice. I'm drawing cards. Okay, this card's a card, okay. Now we shall see if my hold is some kind of reanimator. Alright, so what I could do is oh, I can play Parallax Wave and then I can be able to protect my hero. I could also play Adeline and Path, but I don't think that's good. What I think I'll do is cast Parallax Wave here. Probably Exile Rankle. Buy myself some time. I just think this is safer. We could also can take care of the opponent's threat for a while. Larson, okay. And Grist. Good. 
little narrow. Ooh, thick wisp is not bad. I can play hero and be ready to attack with it. Probably should also get rid of fiend arts and for a while, otherwise it's just gonna do its thing. The targeting could be good fight. That's fine. I have puff to X that. Right, so now. Let's um Off the tricky of Titan. Then I can uh, kill Grist. Don't need to revoke Grist. Grist, Grist. And I want the battle cry to resolve last. All in hand here. I do have some painful cards though with this member and legionnaire, but maybe Yitte can buy me some life back. Or I may not even need to use some of the cards, although what is playing green? So if I hold this mono green, then Yitte is gonna be fantastic if it. Can, if I have time to do its thing. But I want to also be like green, blue, red, and then less clear. Land is very nice. Let's be playing a legionnaire here. One does not know about Lauren, so. Good or bad. So now, do I play Yitte or Flicker Wisp? Uh, I think since I drew Mother of Runes, I should probably just play Yitte plus Mother of Runes because. Okay, well, I can uh, blow that up with uh, Laura if I want to. But is it better to play Yitte plus? I think it's better to play Laura because. If I draw land, I can go get the quit. And now also, oh well, I do have a flicker wisp. I think I put it on top. Looks like a good card here. Yes, I would like to draw land, but I have a lot of things to do with free mana. And with Flicker Wisp and Parallax Wave, I'm gonna want Laura. Want Exiled Snapcaster. Alright, we'll try it again. This time it works. Nice. So now I have a good board. I got some sort of multicolored thing. Oh, that's a good sign. That's usually a sign of desperation when your opponent is cracking a, one of those lands. There's Mana Crypt. And two Golos. Okay, so I should probably flick a Wisp Lore and then kill Golos. 
for my podcast shell book and it's going to be somewhat close. I could also dismember Golos. Yeah. It's probably better. If I dismember Golos. Then I play Mother of Runes plus Usher of the Fallen and my opponent sort of needs a sweeper here. Towards the legionary. Interesting. So, think. Yeah. Noble. Always dismember the bird. <laughs> There's a figure. I can level it up at instant speed. No, I think I should just level it up to four for rather than play a yip. Yeah. Because I didn't see much removal and there isn't that much. I mean, there is a bunch of Infernal Grasps and stuff that that would also be pretty good against Yitte because as soon as I try to equip anything would happen. She's my library. Since my foot is stuck on lands, I'm just gonna blow it up rather than play Yitte. Actually I can do both, but if I can't equip Yitte, that's fine too. Ish, yeah, ish. I just thought my opponent would consider. Alright, we are speed running this draft. And uh, we got a good hand. Really don't want to path turn one, but I, I, I almost. You should almost never do that. I don't even know what kind of creature. Maybe like a Mother of Runes. But even then, it's very painful. You also rather lose the game than path of Mother of Runes turn one. I could flick a Whisper Chrome Ox at some point and uh, force my opponent to either lose the mana from Chrome Ox or excel another card. It's a Lightning Bolt into Magda, okay. <laughs> that I, I could pass just because it's gonna make my opponent treasures anyway. I think I like Selfless over Adley, but, uh, over Mother Runes. I mean, Selfless Spirit has somewhat of a similar effect as Mother Runes, but it has an easier time attacking. Oh, yeah. 
I can play Adeline or Flicker Wisp. You know what? I kind of like Flicker Wisp uh, getting rid of the Chromox. If I want didn't do anything last turn, it's like a good play. Imprint again. No, of course not. Let's be on stage. Uh oh. So there goes my path, but. Here, I can go Talia into Adelaide. Path is ancient tomb, okay. Sure. You can do. I don't have to worry about sweepers when I have uh, Delta Spirit, but uh, I mean, it could be like a I don't know if Meat Talk Massacre, it could be a toxic deluge, I suppose. But what are you gonna do? Toxic Deluge would be a way out. Because it's minus rather than destructive. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that's actually not bad because my one can cost no creatures plus because of Talia. So, my opponent hit Armageddon and Liliana. Armageddon you wouldn't have wanted to cast anyway. And you can't cast Liliana with. Talia in place. That was one of the worst that Talia I've seen, but I understand why my opponent did. Alright, so play Mother of Runes pre combat to puff up Adeline, and I can attack with everything, force my opponent to block Adeline. And do I want to cost this member to keep Adeline in play? Sure, why not? My opponent takes 9. I might as well just do this because. What use is this member if my opponent has like a toxic deluge? Also, my opponent can't cast toxic deluge. Alright, so my opponent is way more combo than I thought. Do you think? I don't know about that relic. Keeping mostly because my opponent mulligan. And Skyclave seems like very good against Chromebox. I don't care too much about that, just Skyclave it. And uh, maybe my opponent gets one ping out of it in response, but then only gets a 1 1. Dwarf, so Magda wouldn't even do anything. It seems like it's weird to have Grim Lava Mancer and Etal in the same deck, but maybe my opponent sideboarded in the Lava Mancer. Right. Sky Clay, the Grim Lava Mancer. I would like to have a little more board presence before I uh, cast Armageddon, of course. Like, I don't think one Skyclave is enough. If I get to land Jitte or Hero, it's a different story, but... I'm gonna put Armageddon on ice for a moment. Don't guess a 1-1 one -one here, that's okay. That is way less scared than a Lawmancer anyway. Work. Now I can cast this member for no life if I... Had an option to. Because I cannot tap the black. That will display the Yitte. Okay. Well, if my home can answer my hero, uh, I could play Self of Spirit first to try and protect it. I'm only taking three. I'm also worried that my home's going to play a big play. I think. Uh, I like playing here so I can double spell next turn. 
I think that uh, it's just so, so mana inefficient to play Selfless Spirit. Okay, um, so uh, I would have lost my card anyway. Okay, we are in some trouble now because it's not going to be easy for me to get back to Monarchy. But it could be, but I could be dead before then. Okay, so I'm going to flick a wisp probably the one one. Take away some of the pressure. And then I'm going to play Talia, which does lock down my opponent's creatures in theory. But um, if I want can mess with my flicker wisp, I was gonna get to draw an extra card every time. So uh, I end up overboard here. Okay. That's interesting. I guess my opponent is figuring that if I get back the monarchy, my opponent can get back the monarchy, but that may not. I think I have to play it like this, though. I don't think it matters if I play Selfish Spirit before my opponent can just respond. So I get back the monarchy, and I'm probably going to play a naked Lauren here because um, I don't want my opponent to get back the monarchy very easily, at least not without losing the cost of the Lich. So I play a just a two one for free. But um I get to draw a card at least. And if I can keep the monarch I put, could maybe even Armageddon to reset everything. I get gold span and mana confidence. So I'm probably have to Armageddon next turn. So my opponent can't cast gold span. It's going to be a, a close game. I'm going to have to block here, of course. But that's okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to arm again. Um, so let's cast arm again first. See what happens. So now gold spawn is gone. And uh, I think I want to keep the selfless spirit back. I think it's actually safer to attack with the selfless spirit. The reason is now I can have double protection from losing the monarchy. Because I have a selfless spirit to crack. Not that it's very easy for my opponent to do something here. Gladly block here, and I think I just uh, let this happen. Seems unnecessary to attack the self the spirit, seems very greedy. Maybe we will. Things looking very good. I have a monarchy, and it, my bot seems to be very far away from getting it back. Maybe about six here, that seems like. That seems very safe. My opponent's not exactly a burn deck. I did see Lightning Bolt, but I, mean, I think it's still not worth it to sacrifice the Selfless Spirit. And uh, once I get Paralyzed Wave, I'm very safe. I think it's just safe to play Parallax Wave here. Um, attack. I don't need to rush things. I got things under complete control.
even allow my phone to attack here, but it seems unnecessary. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I could let it attack, block, and give Mother Earth protection, but that could be one small avenue my phone could have to come with. Oh. Sentinel and Avant to back. Oh, on this percent. Should have a force my home pay one, but my home is tapped out. Oh, my phone stomped me. Oh, <laughs> doesn't matter. All right, that was a very smooth speed run of a draft. See you next week.